Whether you're shopping for your very first TIG welder or you're looking to upgrade your current machine, there's no better time to get into the TIG welding market than now. With recent advancements in technology, our TIG welders have become smaller and more powerful than ever, and they now have more adjustable parameters to provide the control to complete high-end motorsport fabrication jobs in our own garages. One downside to the adjustability of TIG welders is the confusion that it can bring to the shopping process. It can become a little overwhelming reading through the specifics of each machine if you don't understand how these will affect their operation. So let's rewind a little and spend some time thinking about why you need a TIG welder. You're here, so I'm guessing that you're interested in motorsport fabrication. I also know that you'll have a budget and of course you want the best possible machine for the least amount of money. You're also going to want after sales support and the widest array of compatible consumables to get the best out of your machine. It's also important to have the ability to weld extremely thin metals as well as the headroom to be able to weld some thicker plate from time to time too. We're also going to assume you'd prefer the option of being able to weld as many metals as you possibly can. These are all factors that we need to take into account and these will influence our shopping list when it comes to buying the correct TIG welder for your application. The first thing we need to look at is the power supply, and this is driven by what's available in your garage or workshop. We'll get further into these details soon, but it's important that you first shop for what you can actually power, so check the outlets in your space and match these to the welder you're looking to purchase. Thanks to inverter technology reducing power consumption, we can still weld a large variety of metals by running the welder off our home power outlet. Welding heat, or output as it's usually referred to, is defined in terms of amperage and will be the first variable that you'll come across in the designation of TIG machines. You may hear the term multi-process machine when out shopping for a welder, and this refers to the machine supporting multiple styles of weld, as in combining MIG welding and TIG welding into the same machine. On face value, this might seem to be the ideal solution, giving you essentially two welders in one. However, the reality is that these machines are usually not the best choice for our purposes. For example, switching between processes will require different types of inert gas and may require time-consuming setup changes to your machine. The reality is, everything you can do on a MIG, you can also do on a TIG and to a higher standard. So unless you really need the ability to MIG weld for a specific reason, I'd suggest sticking to a dedicated TIG machine. Multi-process machines are generally going to suffer compromises, or if not, then be considerably more expensive. It's common for the name of the machine to be followed by a number that will designate its peak amperage output. Let's look at the machine we use here at HPA's workshop. This is our SWS LMTIG 200, and it outputs a peak of 200 amps. And here's our Miller Dynasty 210DX, which, you guessed it, outputs a peak 210 amps. As we progress through the course, you'll get to know the effects of amperage, and understand that 200 amps will cover the vast majority of work we do in motorsport fabrication. Most 200 amp machines will have the ability to weld materials as thin as half a millimetre, right up to about 6 millimetres in thickness. All TIG welders will have the letters DC, or both AC and DC, which refers to alternating current and direct current. A DC only welder will limit you to welding steels such as mild steel, stainless, chromoly and titanium to name a few. The combination of AC-DC allows us to also weld aluminium, which is a big advantage for motorsport fabrication projects. In motorsport, it's extremely important that we weigh up the benefit of upgrading to an AC-DC welder over a straight DC machine. Even if you don't have any intention of welding aluminium right now, if you can spare the extra cash for an AC-DC machine, it'll almost certainly pay off as you become more experienced with your fabrication projects. I'd also suggest that you take a close look at the quality of the attachments that come with your welder when you're shopping for a machine. It can work out cheaper in the long run to pay a slightly higher price and get a complete setup that already includes a plug-in foot pedal, a quality flex head torch, a gas lens kit and some extra consumables all at the same time. 
Machines designed for motorsport use will usually have this listed in their description and that will give you an indication of its suitability and differentiate itself against more industrial machines with further refinement to the programming and settings to handle intricate fabrication work. When it comes to the torch, you need to also be aware that these are available in air-cooled and water-cooled form. The most common torch you're likely to find in a TIG machine that's designed with motorsport in mind is air-cooled, where the torch is cooled by the flow of the shielding gas. This is going to be absolutely fine for the majority of what we're likely to be doing as motorsport fabricators and as an added upside, these torches are physically smaller than water-cooled variants. If you're expecting to be performing lots of long welds on thicker aluminium material where more heat is required, a water-cooled torch can be a worthwhile addition as these do a better job of dissipating heat and allow you to weld at higher amperage settings for longer. As we progress through this course, it's going to become apparent that the more settings and versatility your machine has to offer, the more control and refinement you're going to have over your welding, but for right now, the most important aspect of buying your machine is that you have everything needed to begin welding. The majority of welders will be supplied with a gas regulator, an earth lead and a TIG torch. It will be up to you to get an argon bottle, tungsten electrodes, filler rods and your own personal protection equipment or PPE such as your helmet and gloves. In summary, there's lots of options out there when it comes to TIG welders. For our purposes, a TIG that can supply around 200 amps is going to be sufficient for most motorsport fabrication tasks, and if your budget allows an AC-DC machine is going to be highly recommended, allowing you more flexibility in the materials that you can weld. Before walking into any shop, it's important you have a clear idea of exactly what it is you want to do with your machine. This is going to help the guy behind the counter point you in the exact right direction so you don't end up wishing you'd got something different a few months down the track when you really start to learn the finer details of your craft. Lastly, carefully consider any package deals that might be on offer. Sure, the upfront cost is likely to be higher, but you may end up buying that foot pedal, gas lens kit or flex head torch sooner rather than later anyway, and at a higher individual price. That was just one of over 50 modules taken from HPA's Practical Motorsport TIG Welding course. If you want to learn how to lay down those perfect stack dime welds every time you pick up the TIG torch, this course is perfect for you. In this course, you'll learn how to get the most out of your TIG welder and correctly adjust it to suit your specific welding task. You'll also learn about correct part preparation and how to work with different materials, everything from mild steel and stainless through to chromoly, aluminium and even titanium. Regardless whether you're completely new to TIG welding or maybe you've had some experience and want to take your skills to the next level, this course is perfect for you. For more information and to purchase this course, click the link to enrol now.